Okay, so let's get down to brass tacks about what this really means, all right, in terms of mathematics. How do I actually take a, a double integral, all right? Because I was pretty elusive last time. What we ended up doing was adding up a bunch of volumes, just like we added up areas when we were doing standard uh, Cartesian integrals, things like that. But what does this mean? So I'm going to write another way that you're going to see this, because we very we, we see this often, but we don't use it often. It doesn't have as much utility as if I were to write something like this. If I were to write the integral from A to B of the integral from C to D of F of X, Y, DX, or excuse me, DY, DX. Now, this is a little bit crazy, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually going to do an example for you, okay? It's going to be super simple. It's going to be quick and easy, all right? I'm going to do the double integral. I'm going to do from 0 to 1, and the integral from... Actually, no, no, no. Let's do the, let's do the example from last section. It was straight out of the book, all right? I think it was... Oh, what was it? i gotta, I, I should, I got to refer back to it. Let's look at it. It was... Where are we? Uh, I want to do the integral, oh man, help me, Lord. Let's see, <laughs> from 0 to 2 and 1 to 2 of x minus 2 x squared. Okay, cool. So let's do that guy. I'm going to do the integral from 0 to 2 of the integral from 1 to 2 of x minus 3y squared. Now, this is really important, all right, this next little chunk. This dA is pivotal because it's going to tell us how to behave. All right, that's kind of key. So if you recall, this integral right here from 1 to 2, those were limits on y. And the way that iterated integrals work, that's what, what, what we're doing, is we're doing iterations of these integrals, right? We do them in iterations, is I work from the inside out. So think of this not as written as the integral from 0 to 2 or the integral from 1 to 2 of x minus 3y squared dy dx. Like, that, that just doesn't make any sense. Think of it as the integral from 0 to 2 of this thing dx, okay? So that's it. That's all, that's all we got to do, all right? So we work from the inside out. Now you can see why the order of this was really important, because if I stick a dx yik, in here and I use these limits on y, I've got big problems. So I can't do that. So let's see. Let's play. Now, what does this say? This says that we are taking limits on y, and this is a dy. Remember how that dummy variable told us that everything that ain't a, ain't a y in this context is a constant, and we've done a ton of work with that. So what happens? Well, I just follow the end of my integral nose. It's literally this simple. I take the integral from 0 to 2 up. Now, the mistake that you're going to make is you're going to take the antiderivative of x as though it was an x, as though this was dx. Remember, we're inside of this integral from 0 to 2 dx. We are now just thinking about this. If you want to do this on the side, if you don't want to do it in one fell swoop, you may. I'm going to change colors and make it obnoxious so you know exactly what I'm doing. All right? I am th now, now I'm not even worried about the 0 to 2 and the dx. I can stick those. Let's go back to, I'm going to stick these guys out here, okay? Now, what's going on inside? Well, again, I'm taking the integral from 1 to 2 of x minus 3y squared. So what does this become? Well, it becomes xy minus y cubed. And then what do I do from 1 to 2? Now, what's effectively going to happen here, and this is the coolest part, is what's effectively going to happen is you'll notice my y's are going to disappear because these are limits on y's. The only thing that's going to remain is an x, and then I take the integral with respect to x. So simple, right? So this becomes 2x minus 8, right? I stick a 2 in for y. I leave x alone. These are limits on y, right? Minus x minus 1, and then I'm going to slap a dx here. Now, this can be a little disconcerting. This guy right here can make us nervous because you're like, wait a sec, I took an antiderivative and I've still got a variable. Yeah, but you took the antiderivative with respect to y. Okay? All right. So let me finish this thing up. So watch what happens. This is equal to the integral from 0 to 2. 2x minus x is x. 
negative 8 minus a negative 1 is minus 7 dx. And now look at that. Oh, it's delightful. I get x squared halves minus 7x from 0 to 2. The 0 disappears, so I don't really have to worry about it. So this is going to be 2 minus 14, which is equal to negative 12. Yay! What did we get before? It was like, what did we get again? Look at that. Negative 11.875. And that was with just four subintervals, four prisms, right? That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Okay, so that's how it's done. Now, watch this. I'm going to show you something. Don't, don't hate me. All right? What if I were to screw up? Not screw up big, screw up little. And let's see if it makes a difference. What if instead I were to reverse the order? What if I went from 1 to 2, the integral from 1 to 2 of the integral from 0 to 2 of x minus 3y squared? Remember, this is just f of xy. This guy never gets to change. But I put dx and then dy. Okay, so I've reversed the order that I've done it. Notice, limits on x, dx. Limits on y, dy. Super important, right? So what are we going to do? This is going to equal the integral from 1 to 2 of. Now I'm dealing with x, so this guy is nothing but a constant. Okay, with me? So I'm going to get x squared halves minus 3xy squared, right? The antiderivative of a constant dx is just going to be the constant times x. Right? This is evaluated from 0 to 2, and then I slap my dy. Now, for those of you that get a little lazy with notation, and I'm guilty of this from time to time myself, this could be a nightmare for you. So really slow down. Take your time with these. All right? So this is going to be equal to the integral from 1 to 2. Now, I'm going to just do this in my head, if you guys don't mind, because the 0 makes it easy. 0 makes all this disappear. When I plug in the 2, I get 4 halves, which is 2, minus 6y squared dy. And look at this. Now I'm back to, back to where I started. 2y minus, what is that, 2y cubed? That looks right, doesn't it? From 1 to 2. And let's make sure that we get the same thing. We may not. You never can tell. So this is going to be what? 4 minus 16. True, because 2 cubed is 8. 2 times 8 is 16. All right, I got this guy. And then I'm going to go minus, and that's going to be 2 minus 2. Hey, look at that. Those guys cancel out. 4 minus 16. So delicious. I absolutely love it. And from this, we get something called Fubini's theorem. Fubini's theorem. What a great thing to say. I don't know what just happened there, but that's going to be my theorem for the day. What it says is this. It says the double integral over R of f of x, y, dA is equal to, I can do the integral from A to B of the integral from C to D of f of x, y. Now, careful here. Remember how we did this before. This is going to be dy dx. A to B is x. We're going to stay consistent with that. C to D is y. So I'm taking notice, working my way inside out. And this is exactly equal to the integral from C to D of the integral from A to B of f of x, y. And this is going to be dx dy. The trick with this is to stay super, super loyal, super loyal to that inside out approach. Because if you don't, you're going to get yourself in, in quite a bit of trouble. Now, there's one other really cool, like an interesting phenomenon here. Now, notice back here we took this function. Uh, what do we do? We did x minus 3y squared. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you something here. What if I were to take the integral, let's see, what was uh, 0 to 2 of the integral from 1 to 2. Now, I'm going to use the same limits, but this time instead, I'm going to use x times 3y squared. All right, so I'm going to actually leave this as 3y squared. I know I would never leave you, that you guys would yell at me for days. This is dy, and this is dx. Now I've got a product. Well, let's think about this thing here for just a second, OK? Just hang with me for a minute. Do you agree that if we do the inside-out approach, we're dealing with the y's first? So the independent variable is y, everything else is a constant. And we know that a constant, the integral of a constant times a function, I can take that constant and stick it out front. So what I end up with is the integral from 0 to 2 of x times the integral from 1 to 2 of 3y squared dy right? And then I've got this dx. Now there's going to be a little presto change-o that, whoops, that's supposed to be. 
there's going to be a little, that should be a dy. Now, think about what's going on here, okay? You may be like, whoa, what just happened? No, 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 don't panic. I took the x, which was a constant as far as this integral was concerned. I moved it to the front, so I have this thing. Now, what is this integral going to produce? Just think about it for a sec. Taking a definite integral of a function, right? It's like I, this is the little compartmentalized thing that I get to do all on my own. And what do I end up with? I end up with a constant. It itself is a constant. So think of this as just one big constant. Ooh, yeah, let's be careful with that. <laughs> That's going to show up again later, kind of over and over again. All right? Well, if it's a constant inside of this, doesn't that mean that I take the integral from 0 to 2 of x times a constant dx. Well, if I use the same rule over again, then I get constant times the integral from 0 to 2 of x dx. Well, what was c? Well, c was the integral from 1 to 2 of 3y squared dy, right, times the integral from 0 to 2 of x dx. Isn't that fabulous? Now, what does that mean? That's easy. It means if I take the integral from a to b of the integral from c to d, or the double integral over R, I may say that. I don't want to say the double integral of A to B, C to D, right? It just sounds awful. Of, let's go, F of XY, G of XY. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Don't need you. Let's get rid of Fs because that's going to screw things up. That was a C up there. If I've got a product of, let's go, G of X, times h of y. Now, this guy combines to be f of x, y. That's why I didn't want to use f, okay? And this is going to be dy dx. Then what did I just show you could do? I could go through exactly the same process. And what would happen? Well, this g of x, as far as this dy and this integral are concerned, is a constant. I can pull it out. This, what's left over is this constant gets spat out, which I can then pull out. So I know back in the day I screamed and yelled and I said, kids, the integral of a product is never the product of the integral, kind of, right? <laughs> well, except in this case, I can rewrite this as the integral from a to b of g of x dx times the integral from c to d of h of y dy. <laughs> That's so awesome. And ladies and gentlemen, that's also the end of our little tale in this section. Super useful. Um, I'm not going to insult you with a whole bunch of, of different uh, examples. We'll do a bunch of those in class. Okay? Thanks for your time. Thanks for your attention. Have a wonderful day.